Today's the day. The grand opening's finally here. I'm super excited for all, everyone coming. We put a lot of work into this. I can't thank my team enough for everything they've done, all the people helping us, all the vendors who donated stuff, all the vendors who showed up, all the people who showed up. It truly means a lot to me and my family who own this. We thank you. I hope you had a good time and we might do this again next year. Well, what's up guys? Good morning. We are back out at the local lake, Lake G Jarvis. Haven't seen you guys in a while, but those who came out to the, to the Capra's grand opening, that was super cool meeting you guys. If you are one of those people that I met out there and we chatted, guys, appreciate y'all so much for watching and supporting the channel. That is just amazing that folks out there watch my stuff you know and i'm just a regular dude like you you know so that's cool but um yeah today's goal is to catch some fish we're gonna fish for a couple hours we scanned out shore and uh we see some pretty good stuff right now we're pretty much just working by the beach as you guys can see and we are in about eight feet of water we can see some bait fish you guys might be able to see it on live scope but there's some bait fish from me away from us right now you don't really see much on Mega360, but you can see those black dots. Those are indicating that they are bait fish because you can see their shadow. And our goal is to catch some bass, but uh, we'll see if we can catch some today. I think we might. Right now the time is 6.30. Water temperature is 73.87. We're starting out for a crankbait. Why not try to get some fish to react right away? But that is a lot of bait. Exactly what I saw when uh, I was here ice fishing. Just tons of bait. Those are just small bluegills. And crappie. First cast. Let's see if we can crank this dude down there. Get a reaction strike. We have pretty much slick calm conditions as you can see. Very beautiful high pressure but in the morning it's not too high but the fish do get used to it so it shouldn't really matter anyways first pass you see some little bass underneath them at the bottom there bass on live scope just look maybe like a little bit bigger than those bait fish Given a bait fish is approximately like anywhere from 6 to 10, 12 inches if they're slab or whatnot. But a bass is probably just going to be a little bit bigger. Ain't going to be too much bigger. And so, holy shit, that must be a carp right there. I think that's a carp. Yeah, those are carp. Just bumped into some. But carps, they are usually very big on live scope. They are indicators that uh, show you how far things are from you in regards of five feet. And sometimes the carp show up and they're five feet. Obviously a bass, they aren't gonna be five feet long. So that shows us that that is a carp. The bass is just a little bit bigger than the bait fish on live scope. Yeah, he's running swimming away. But I don't think they want a reaction. I am trying to learn more skills this year getting confidence in new baits like drop shot and nico so let's give those a shot right here's just a little nico with a nail weight i forgot what this exact warm is but i think it's the x zone x zone mb fat that's all i know i think that's nice about this warm too 
is that it's it has a really nice float to it i did see a bass swim into the weeds oh that looks like a that's a carp that dude's five feet long and then it'd be awesome to catch a five foot bass <clears throat> i see some craters holes in the bottom composition that might have some fish hiding in them you see that it was like one two three four craters i did notice those when i was ice fishing too now i don't know if there's gonna be a bass sitting on them or not but only one way to find out there's some very large looking fish down there <coughs> those are probably not bass I haven't fished this lake in a while too. I was standing around, I did find some bluegill beds too. Bass, they should be around bluegill beds. 35 feet out that way, there's a fish hugging the bottom. Bass, from what I've noticed in our areas in Minnesota, on live scope, they generally are hugging near the bottom. Not too suspended too high, but just kind of like maybe a few feet sometimes just cruising on the mud but typically from what i can guess is that if there's bait fish nibbing at your lure if there's a bass nearby he will come and see what the bluegills are doing and usually take their food away from them even though they are predator and prey they are still the same fish family and they do hang out together I think there's much fish activity here. Instead of slowing it down, I think we're gonna crank it up. Cover ground. The weeds this year aren't that high, so uh, the fish should be sticking around those weed lines, shallower water. That might be a bass. Ooh. Tink. This is exactly what we need. A little feisty one pounder. Oh yeah, dude. That might be a little too small. They're so small. Thank you, though. Well, they're gonna bite the drop shot. We are gonna throw the drop shot. Yeah, it's a big fish in front of me. On the drop shot. Spat out my worm. This dude went airborne. I love this mega bass destroyer land set, dude. Just check out the bend on it, man. Just gives so much give to the fish. So much give. These are definitely dinkers. <sighs> Cannot complain about a dink. If we haven't caught any fish yet, and which we have not, little dink. Okay, buddy. One pounder. Feisty dude. Little one. Damn, they're actually pretty big now.
Wow. The wacky worm. Well, not the wacky worm, the drop shot. Damn, you're feeling salty about that big one that I lost earlier today. But who doesn't lose big fish, right? Everybody loses big fish. Fishing history. I gotta figure out a new spot, guys. I only have like about an hour, 30 minutes left. Oh, no wonder this thing. I don't see as much fish activity as I do in this spot at all. That's a big one. That's a freaking tank. About 40 feet that way. That's about 50 feet. Come on, come get it. Come get it. Come on, come on. Come get it. Come get it. Oh, he already had it, guys. Oh my gosh. Come on, I gotta be careful of this drag. Oh my god, that is not a freaking bass, dude. That's a freaking musky. What the frick? <laughs> what the hell? On a freaking drop shot, bro. What the hell? It's a freaking donkey, dude. Oh my god. I thought I was looking at a big old bass down there. Turns out being like a big old tiger. Well, I'm gonna take my time with this fish. I haven't caught one of these bad boys in a while. Eight pound test, 10 pound braid. Using a VMC red line hook. Man, I really thought this was gonna be a donkey bass. I cannot complain, dude. Holy smokes. I tired this dude out. This is gonna be a 10 minute fight for sure. But you guys know me, you guys seen this channel. We catch big old fish accidentally, always on the spinning rod, boys. Never on the big rod, always on the little spinning stick. Dude, this is a giant. Oh my goodness. Please let me land this fish. You boy jump, you boy jump. Oh no, no, no. Oh, he's good, he's good, he's good. I see him. And now my musky boys will be jelly. Woo! Just did a corkscrew flip. Oh, he ain't that big. Definitely feels big on the spinning rod. It's getting more tired now. Wow, look at that tiger. And got him right at the side of his mouth too. Fish of 10,000 cast, baby, in the net. Let's go. Y'all gotta smash a thumbs up for that. We are not catching a bass, but we caught our first tiger muskie in a long time, in a few years. Holy donkeys, what a beautiful fish. Look at that, guys. First tiger muskie of the year freaking pig man he was about close to i'm not sure how big but look at that ow my hand shredding me up i gotta release this fish i gotta take out the hook too most importantly and then revive the fish too Trying to get my hook back, buddy. VMC red line. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and let this muskie go. Ain't exactly a giant giant, but she's big enough for me. Wow. Check out the patterns on this fish, guys. Make sure she's good to go. 
because last time when I was catching muskies, I didn't really know what to do, but this time I'm a lot more prepared. So basically, instead of just whipping them back in the water, you gotta let them like regain their strength. I think you're supposed to like swim them like with the current too, I think. Let the oxygen flow through her lungs. I think she's ready to go. Well, peace out, Mr. Tiger. Thanks for the fight. Wow. My hand is shredded by them gill rakers. But I can't complain. I'd rather take the gill rakers than the razor sharp teeth. Y'all gotta smash a thumbs up for that. Accidentally catching all the coolest species on spinning rods. That's me, man. Never ever target species. Whew. Well, guys, I think we're gonna wrap it up. What a fun day of fishing, man. Came out here, haven't fished this lake in quite some time. Still able to get to catch some fish. And building my drop shop technique, making sure that I am more dialed in than I am. I think the next week here, I'm gonna be doing some pre-fishing for the St. Croix tournament. Yes, I will be participating in it. I know some of y'all have been asking why I'm not, and I've decided to pull the trigger. I will be fishing it with my boy Ty and Sam. Ty will be captain. And uh, we're gonna be fishing it, guys. This could be probably one of the biggest tournaments that I'm gonna be fishing for ever. So wish me luck, guys. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know people or will be participating too as well. So good luck to you guys. I understand it is not the easiest of water to cover and fish because those smallmouth bass in that river, man, they are sure difficult to catch sometimes. But anyways, guys, uh, thank you guys so much for watching till the end here. Make sure to comment something down below if you haven't already. Go ahead and comment down below what techniques are you working on and how are they doing for you. But other than that, guy, keeping it short here, I will see you on the next one. Peace out, guys.